Hello friends. In this video, we will be discussing about the concept of one dimensional array. How to declare and how to use one dimensional array in C programming language. So first of all, we try to understand what is the need of an array. So here you can see we have written a very simple statement integer one variable that is value and we are assigning the value 10 to that particular variable. Now, if I'm writing the next statement like this value equals to 20, then what will happen? So the memory location here, you can see a memory location mentioned in a blue block. We can see and the value of that particular memory location or the variable is 10. Once I'm writing value equals to 20, the value on that particular memory location gets changed. Now it becomes 20. So from this, we can get to know that a single variable can able to hold a single value at a time. Previously it was 10. Since we have changed the value to 20. So now the value has been changed to 20. So that a variable can able to handle a single value at a time. Now, what if we want to store more number of values. For example, suppose I want to store the result of the whole class. Suppose there are 100 students studying in a class and each student has given exam of five different subjects. So 100 into 5. So we are supposed to store almost around 500 different values. So are we going to de declare 500 different variables? Is it feasible? No. So this is not the way. So what if when we have more number of values to be stored, are we going to go like this a1, a2, a3, a4, like this type of variables we are going to define? No, this is not a feasible way to go with. So what is the solution? If we need to store many values, if we need to store large number of values, then what we need to go for? We need to go for the concept of array. Now, what is an array? Array is a collection of more than one value of the same type. Here, very important thing is the same type. It means that if I am declaring an integer array, then all the values within that array must be of integer type. If I am storing the value of float in particular array, which is declared as float array, then all the values must be of float type. So we cannot have an array which contain float value, which contain integer value, which contains character value. No, that type of thing is not possible. So here array is that array is the collection of different values. But the constraint is all those values must be of same data type. OK. Now, how to declare an array? So here we can see the syntax. We need to write the data type, then space, the name of array and into square bracket. We need to specify the size of an array. For an example, if I were to store five different values of integer type, then what I will write? I will write data type is integer. Name of array is A and I want to get five elements or I want to store five different values so that I have given size equals to five. So integer a of five. This is how array can be declared. So once this statement gets executed in our memory, there will be five different memory location generated and the name will be given automatically. Like once you have written integer a of five, so automatically five different memory locations will be created. You can see on the right side that we can have A0, A1, A2, A3 and A4. So likewise, there are five different elements created in the memory. Now I also mentioned the memory location since it is an integer array. So if we assume that the first element starts from 1010, then the next element will be at 1012 then 1014, 1016 and 1018. Likewise, the memory allocation will be in the sequential pattern. 
since integer occupies two bytes there is a gap of two bytes in the memory addresses so in short whenever you you are declaring an array that number of elements will be created in the memory now naming of that and uh, of the array will be automatic starting from array index 0 the index 0 is always considered it means that array will always starts from array index 0 so that a of 0 and starting from a of 0 it will be up to a of size minus 1 now next one is suppose we have declared one array of float type float b of 7 then what will happen so again we have just seen according to that there will be seven memory locations generated you can see here there are seven memory locations starting from b of 0 because the array index always starts from 0 so b of 0 to b of size minus 1 here the value of size is 7 so 7 minus 1 is 6 so total 7 memory locations are created in which we can able to store the value and we can have the memory location addresses also now here you can see since it is a float variable and float variable occupies 4 bytes you can see the first element is at 1010 then the second element is at 1014 there is a gap of 4 in the previous case there is a gap of 2 because it was integer array this is float array so that we have gap of 4 so this is how whenever we write integer a of 5 or integer a of 10 or integer a of 100 in this single statement automatically 100 variables will be created and we need not to write all these variables separately we need not to declare all these variables separately so this is the power of an array but the constraint is all this element should be of the same type if the array is of integer type then all the values must be of integer type if array is of float type then all the values must be of the float type now how to work with an array it means we can say how to scan the array element how to print the array element how to use the concept of array in practical so first of all here you can see once i will write integer a of 5 what will happen it will create the file element starting from array index 0 okay so now we need to scan five different values so again if you recall then the operation we can say scanning operation or we can say taking the value of user uh, taking the value from user this operation we need to repeat for five times because array contains five elements so to repeat the same short of operation again and again what we are using we are using loop so in short we can say that more or less wherever we are using array we need to use loop because we are going to perform the same same sort of operation on all the elements of an array so that wherever it is an array we need to go for loop so integer array of 5 we have declared so automatically 5 memory locations are created the naming a of 0 to a of 4 now you can see here we have declared one integer variable that is our loop control variable now i equals to starting index now we know that array starts from array index 0 so always it will be 0 then i less than equals to ending index ending index will be size minus 1 so here the size is 5 so here we can write i less than equals to 4 and then very simple scan f percentage d array name so here array name is a and into bracket we need to write loop control variable that is i just see the example so integer i i equals to 0 because array index starts from 0 i less than equals to 4 why because the size is 5 and we need to move up to 4 because we have elements starting from a of 0 to a of 4 and since we are starting from 0 and we need to reach at 4 we have written i plus plus now in scanf what we have written scanf percentage d ampersand a of i 
so a of i now if you execute this code you can just verify or you can just get to know that when i equals to 0 initially i equals to 0 so we are scaring the value of a of 0 so if i enter 10 then that will be stored in a of 0 why because i equals to 0 now i will be incremented so now i will be 1 so the next value will be a of 1 now i will be incremented now i becomes 2 the next value will be a of 2 now i becomes 3 so next value will be a of 3 then i becomes 4 so next value will be a of 4 now i becomes 5 now you check out the condition 5 less than equals to 4 condition becomes false so we will be coming out of the loop so by writing a single scanf statement and we have returned that m percent a of i since we have returned that particular statement in a loop so all the values for all the elements will be scanned using the concept of loop suppose we need to print the value we can also write the statement in the same way so for for loop will remain as it is because we are printing the equal number of elements and in place of scan f what we will be writing we will be writing printf percentage d a of i so initially i is 0 so it will be printing the value of a of 0 then a of 1 a of 2 a of 3 a of 4 and likewise so array is very simple only the difference is in place of writing integer a we need to write integer a of size or we can say integer a of 5 or integer a of 10 or anything depending upon the requirement second change is in scanf we used to write percentage d m percent a for a normal variable but for array first of all we need to use the loop and second in place of writing just a variable name we need to write variable name into bracket loop control variable for example a of i okay and this statement is to be returned within the loop because the same operation we are supposed to repeat so the concept of using array is very simple but it is very important at the same time so i hope you understood the concept of an array if you are having any doubt any query regarding this you can write to me on 6 at gmail.com thank you all for watching the video